I'm just going to show an example of creating a complete PLC device with both PLC signals and PLC main. So I'm going to start on a page with the PLC signal. So I'm going to go to the draw command. I'm going to zoom in a bit. This is C electrical V8R3 and I'm on service pack three. So I'm going to start drawing down. I don't want it to be that big. So I'm going to hit the space bar as I'm going down. And rather than being minus five, I'm just going to have it as minus 2.5. Nice and small. I'm then going to go to draw a circle. And I'm going to draw a circle from this point here. And I'm going to hit the space bar and have that radius has been just 2.5. So I've now got a circle and a line. And I'm just going to put a line through that just to put a graphic on there and just trim it at the end. So I'm going to go to the trim command. So I've kept it on a five millimeter grid so I know where everything should be. I'm going to window around that and hold down control and drag that across to the right. I'm going to put a bit of a gap between these two connection points. So it's going to be an analog input. It's at the bottom of the page and I've got two connection points now. So that's all I need for the graphics. I'm going to right click once I've selected everything and choose block. Now by choosing block and setting it as a PLC signal, the software will add the attributes, the text descriptions that are minimal for a PLC signal. So I'm going to click on OK and notice it's added a connection point for each of those points or connection points or lines that I've drawn. A PLC address, so I'm going to just put that as number one, otherwise it'll start warning me there's no address. A description, a comment, and in fact a, a cross-reference back to the PLC main. So I'm going to click on OK and that's fine. Now I'm just going to move the, uh, the address text and the description. So I'm going to explode it and just window around those bits at the bottom. Choose Control X to cut, Control V to paste, and use the fact that once something's on my cursor, I can use X and Z to rotate. So I'm going to use X, rotate that a little bit, just drop it onto a 2.5 millimeter grid, and just drop it in between those two. I'm going to select those bits of text. They're already right hand justified, so they're going to work down the page. I'm going to use Control E to edit the text. And I'm going to select an angle just to make it a bit more easier to read front on. So I'm going to put a 60 degree angle on there. You don't have to, but just it looks a bit better if I just do that. So that's my PLC signal done. I'm going to window around it, block it again as a PLC signal. Doesn't ask me for anything else. It's got all the information it needs in there. So I'm going to click on OK and that's done. So it's called it PLC2. That's fine. So I'm now going to create the PLC main. Now it's made up of PLC signals. So again, I'm going to do a box here, drag that down and have another one there for the other connection point. I'm just going to go onto a different grid. Now it's important that wires are not connected to these PLC signals. They're only here for reference. So I'm going to put these on here. I'm going to window around this, right click and block it again as a PLC signal. Now for the moment, I'm just going to call this one PLC3. And in the connection points, that's fine. I'm going to put that as being address number one. Now the text is all on this side. I want it to be on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is just explode. And I'm going to window around just those bits there. And just drag those across the other side. Now they're actually right hand justified. So control E again, I'm going to change it to left justified. And that text is now going off to the right. The text in the middle here, I'm going to use right click, select single element, F6, click on this one, hold down control, click on this one, and then right click and choose move. And I want that to be in the middle of that box. Now it's not allowing me to really put it in there. So I'm going to go into change the grid while I'm holding that text. And I'm going to drop it in the middle of that box there. Perfect. Now I don't need to worry about the position of the PLC text here because that's going to disappear at the end of this. Now when we're creating PLCs um, it's useful to be able to control the addressing and automatically address it. So what I'm going to do is right click on circuit diagram IC, go into the properties and I'm going to change the address numbering to be decimal. I'm also going to change the settings so that we take the properties not from the change component but from the main reference from the PLC card. You will find if that's not set, every time you put in a PLC signal, it clears out the connection points of what you're connecting to. I'm just going to block this as a PLC signal. 
So I'm going to right click, block, back as a PLC signal again. Now I want four of these, so I'm going to hold down the number three and then drag downwards, a bit of space in between them. And I'm going to number these. I'm going to say that this is connection points three and four, and that's the second address. And it's going to be five and six, and that's the third address. Press enter twice, and then it's going to be seven and eight, and that's the fourth address. So it's important to keep those connection points and addresses unique as you're going down this, so that it's, uh, it doesn't have any duplication in there. Now you can change it afterwards, the addressing. So for now, I'm going to draw a box around that, which is going to effectively become the outline of the PLC. I'm going to leave a bit of a gap at the top. And I'm going to put a five millimeter grid so it finishes at the bottom of the page at a nice suitable point. And then I'm going to add some connection point text. So I'm going to go to create new text. And I'm going to put plus 24 volt, Let's put an uppercase volt DC. And I'm going to say this is going to be connection text. So I go into the connection and double click on the first attribute. So now wherever I click is going to be a connection point. I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees and I'm going to have it's been right justified. So just there. Then I'm going to have zero volt DC. Place one there. And I'm going to have an ethernet connection as well. I'm just going to go into the box leave my cursor in there and put an ethernet in there as well. So these are connection points that you will be able to connect to. I'm also going to go to the top and put in some descriptive information for the main card for the actual product, the type and the description. So I'm going to go to create text, control T, PLC has been the text and that's going to be other components going to be the product. Put it back to a zero and left justify. I'm going to put some description in, so I'm going to put this as being four, four analog inputs, main description, description zero zero, and I'm also going to put the part in, just leave my cursor there, put it as being part one, go and add to type and double click, and I'm going to put that on a 2.5 millimeter grid two, just to there. So when I window around this, I can right click and block it. Only this time I get two options. One is a block which keeps it all together, but block uh, PLC main allows me to actually add intelligence to that. So it becomes a PLC main symbol. Everything disappears. And when I click on OK, I've just got the main inputs and outputs. In this case, four analog inputs. Now, because I set up the properties here, if I just double click on the card, I can see all the information shown together. Show auxiliary information shows not just the points that I can connect to and the description for the main card, but all of the inner PLC signals. I'm going to go into the addressing and say that this is I0.0, .0. press enter, and I can see it's automatically addressing those. I'm going to go down to the, my PLC signal here, and if I just hold down control, copy that across to the right, and I'm going to select two things. I'm going to select the PLC product and also the connection. Now notice it's got a list of the addresses and on the right, the connection points. If the cross reference is not filled in, then that one is free. You can select it, click OK, and it fills in the connection points and the address and any descriptions or comments. So this is now showing the same information that we have back on the card, as well as a cross reference. We can double click to go back to there. When we double click on here, we can select Descriptions, so and we can put those in. So if we put that as being maybe valve height, motor overrun. So we can put some descriptions in there. We can put comments in, and that information will also show on the separate card symbols that we're using here. So if I just Copy that one across. It's picking up the next information. And I can see that that's linking to the main card. So these symbols here at the bottom 
on what you would wire to. And this PLC main is holding the actual whole information and it's got any additional power connections or ethernet connections. If you wanted to at the bottom on the PLC inputs or outputs, I'm on the wrong grid here, but you could draw a box around those and say that these are all part of a PLC card window around that right click and then block as a block just to keep them together. So you're not adding any intelligence. You can still double click and see the information for each one of these, but we only need one identification here. So this is the PLC. And this is what we're now connecting to. So if we had another card, we could copy that across. So I'm just going to click on cancel and just check the addressing on here. I'm going to double click and put this as being I 1.0. Notice it's updating those. And I've got an error because of this one down here, actually. That's the one I was looking for. And then on another page, maybe copy that. Paste it on this page. And now just select that it's the PLC2. Notice the connection points and address are not set just by choosing that. We can choose which address it is. 1.0 now. Click OK. And all of the rest of these are linked in sequence. So they're all now linked and you've got that page cross reference to where they are wired to. With this functionality, this is the expected way of using PLCs in C Electrical, and it allows the full range of functions. So you can import IO data from spreadsheets in the advanced level, and you've got the full range of PLC reports and information. So under database, you can go to the IO information where you can see all of this information, and you can also edit that information directly from here as well. If you create a PLC symbol in a different way, then you may lose some of the functionality. You may not be able to number wires according to the PLC address, or you may not be able to import from spreadsheet. So just be aware of that when you're creating your own symbols.